as a multimedia composer, you end up gathering a lot of uh, things. One of those things might look something like a random glockenspiel that you have for some reason. We're going to be building this uh, kind of particle cloud of Bode's um, glockenspiel sounds. The first element that we're going to be building here is going to be a blueprint actor. Um, and the actor we're just going to create the same way we did last time. Um, it's going to be a standalone thing that we drop into a scene. It's going to do a lot of its own creation. Um, we're going to walk through the header first. Uh, and then the source component and then uh, triggering it and having a listen. The end result sounds like this. So let's jump straight in and start looking at uh, this source. Now, it is an actor component um, and it handles these virtual uh, functions, begin, play, and tick. Even though we're not really gonna use tick, we actually still need to implement it because of it is a pure virtual function. So if I got rid of this, I would start getting errors. So I get an error because of the way pure virtual functions work. So you do need to override them, even if we don't override them with doing anything in particular, you need to implement them. Um, and we'll talk about virtual functions a little bit more uh, over the course of building more of these tools. We'll want to include the audio component um, as well, and it's the only real major include that we'll have to do. Um, we'll need that for this use sound base. Now use sound base uh, handles sound cues, it handles meta sounds and it handles regular sounds. Um, so it's a good, it's a great place actually to start. Uh, this is kind of going to emulate the sound um, painting kind of system that exists. Um, but essentially this would be a whole collection of sounds that will get triggered, um, all being one shots. Uh, very important that they're one shots, not loops. Now it is an array of the sound bases. Um, so I'm just going to call it sound collection. We will need, uh, this, these props, this blueprint read, write, and the category. Otherwise we won't be able to use it inside unreal. Next up, we have the count of the speakers that we could use to play. Um, now for this, we are also going to make a property uh, so that we can edit this in the engine. Um, and we're going to set this just to 10 to start with. Now this will very much depend on your platform. You won't be able to have probably 10 different ones because uh, this is to solve this problem of constant create create, play, destroy, create, play, destroy, because the creating and the destruction of objects at runtime is, is very expensive. And so instead of creating and destroying them, what we do is we kind of uh, switch them on and switch them off. And there's a difference there with uh, enabling and disabling um, is much cheaper than creating them from scratch. So the whole idea here is that I have 10 objects that are ready to go, they're in a pool. Um, and you know, you let me know, and then I'll use one. And you let me know, so I turn one on, I, I set it up, I give it the right sound, I trigger it to play, and I turn it off again. Then, you know, uh, you, you let me know, and I do the same thing again, and I just kind of pull from my resource pool. And when my resource pool is empty, I, I don't do the action, and we kind of handle it that way. It's a very set condition, set cost. Um, sort of action. So it's fantastic for games because it's a way for us to really keep an eye on our resource cost um, and understanding that. Then we have some spawning logic. I will have a blank function here just called spawn audio source, which is we're going to write and implement that in the other uh, in the other script. Then we have three components here. We have the frequency of spawning, which is going to be this custom spawn time. We have uh, the random size. So this is uh, how where they should be positioned when they are spawned. I've just given them between one and 500. If you have a bigger space, um, you could cover that as well, but you're sort of imagining a, a sphere around uh, your your player or, or your area. And the idea here is that, you know, if we were looking at this just in a two dimensional plane, you might have some components spawning like this, you know, the, the Y might be the middle, but then it's gonna kind of populate around that. This timer handle we're going to use to kind of override tick in a way because we're just going to use it to do a custom spawn time um, instead of overriding tick and checking against each tick, which would also work. Uh, then we have the speakers themselves, uh, which is an array of components that we're going to create um, in the script itself. 
this will handle these sound bases um, because the sound collection is the you know the sound the CDs and these are the the CD players. Or the... Now in the implementation side of this, uh, we we have three steps here. We have one step which is the begin play function. Um, and this begin play function, we do still need to implement it and we're going to use it uh, to sort of set up um, each of these components. So uh, this is that pure virtual function that we talked about a little bit before. And we have the tick function that we also have to implement. Um, and we've done these in the past as well. We've just sometimes done something with them, but you can't get rid of them. Um, then we have a spawn audio source and the get available audio source component. So in, in essence, we, we need something to create all the speakers, then we need something to pick a speaker, give us a sound, and play it. And that's that's really all we're actually doing, and move some positions around, I suppose, as well. But uh, there's actually a lot of learnings here. So in the begin play, we're going to set up um, the components. Now, the pool size is 10, so we're going to create 10 new objects. Um, and we're going to register them. They're all going to be audio components, audio component being the thing that will play um, the sound. They're all going to be registered to the root component, which will be the audio spawner. And we're going to set up the components. We're going to register them. We're going to attach them. And then we're going to add them to the pool, the pool being that array a little bit earlier on um, of uh, you audio components, um, the, the CD players, or the CD player as it were, or CD players, it's, it's like a, an eight track. Oh God. Uh, um, so this audio source component, once we've gone through and attached this, we add it to the pool. Um, and this sets up the pool for being able to then be operated on to get audio sources or audio source components out to reset up. This is some wacky syntax, but it's not that crazy. So we want to get the world, which is the audio spawners actors world, the timer manager from the world, then the timer, um, we are setting up using the timer handle from our header file, uh, which is the one we set up uh, in our in our header. Uh, this being the audio spawner, and then the address of the audio spawner. So this is a callback function. This is what's going to happen when the timer goes off, um, being that we want to spawn an audio source. And the custom spawn time is going to be the time that the timer needs. Um, so we've currently got it five seconds. It, it might be a lot shorter than that, actually, um, given that we want to like trigger lots of little little sounds. So each time that's going to fire off. Right. And we don't really care about the false right now. It's just part of the last part of the arguments. We're not going to go to the documentation. Next up, we have the tick function, which we have to implement. So don't delete this, leave it here um, and move on with your life. And then we need to, uh, th this spawn audio source is going to be triggered from our audio spawner, our, our timer. So if there are sounds in the collection, there's sounds and we haven't like deleted them maybe over time, we will, we want to make sure that some, then we want to get one at random, which could involve playing all of the same sound um, with this specific logic. This is not like round robin scripting to ensure that things are working like that. Uh, and then we're going to get the sound base and which is going to be uh, the, the sound that we're selecting. Um, so we're going to address the array uh, with the index. So this will be sound collection and then the index that we've just chosen with random. And if we've gotten a valid sound with this, we can kind of progress. Now you could do this in meta sounds. You could do this in sound cues. Uh, it's really just showing you a different way to kind of uh, to kind of do this behavior. We after we've gotten a sound, we check that it is valid, that we haven't gotten um, an empty sound. Like if we've deleted a sound from inside a pool and then tried to access it or something like that. Uh, because yeah, we, we could, we, we actually could do that resource allocation for whatever reason. Um, and we don't, we can't resize the array. So, you know, maybe, maybe the index is still there, but it's not valid. Uh, but if it is, we then need to get a speaker. So we'll need to run our get available audio source component function, which is one we've, we're going to set up. Um, and this is going to return a valid audio source with which to play. So 
down here where we have very, very small function, uh, we're going to look for an audio component uh, or a pointer to an audio component more specifically. Um, it belongs to the audio spawner class and it is called get available audio source component. This is the function we defined right at the bottom here. So we copy that function signature if you're not sure. Then we'll need to loop through the audio components in the pool and work out if they're playing. This is a pretty basic function for, from um, the U audio component, uh, which is actually really handy. We go through the components and if they're not playing, the little, uh, the little operator right at the front there saying that they aren't playing and so as opposed to are playing, if they were playing, I guess you could try and stop them. You could maybe write stop available audio source or something like that. And if they aren't playing, then give us one back. And if they all are all playing, then it's null and return null pointer. And this if checks against that null pointer. So when we're back in our spawn audio source, uh, spawn, of, spawn audio source component, um, spawn audio source function, then we check against that null. So when we've got a sound that is valid, we set up the sound on the index of the available audio source that we've picked. We take our selected sound with the random sound that we've picked, we put it in, we create a new location by getting the current actor's location, which we're not gonna move and get a random amount um, between our min and max spawn radius uh, for that. And then set up the new world position of that audio source and uh, play it. And that's, that's the, the, the crux of this whole thing. Um, and then we fire off our timer again. It's, it's sort of recursive in that way, I suppose, in that it will call itself later on. And every time it fires, it's going to call again, audio source component, a uh, spawn audio source um, in the system time. How does this look in practice? Well, I'm here in this bizarre project. Um, I, I mean, bizarre as in, the, the market, not that it's strange, uh, which was one of the free assets from last week, uh, last, last month, uh, I should say, or maybe it's this month. So if I go free for the month um, and we have a look. Yeah, so it was last month. Uh, it was this awesome, uh, bizarre kit. Let me grab it. Uh, which is, uh, yeah, phenomenal assets, looks amazing, has a bunch of great things from Meshing Gun Studios. Um, and yeah, I'm just using this uh, because it looks fantastic. So I'm here in the project. Uh, I'm just in one of their template maps. You can see that there's a lot going on here and we'll need to add some sandstorms and things like that. But for now, I'm gonna use these Glock samples that I've added, um, which came from the recording of the library. Uh, I might not have a turn on attenuation actually, so I might need to jump back out again in a second and turn on attenuation for these samples uh oh we probably can't do that straight from here um we're going to have to add let's do them with the bulk edit tool instead of uh what we would normally do them with we want to go attenuation let's add an attenuation uh we're going to create an attenuation we don't have any attenuations so we're gonna to have to make an attenuation <laughs> first up. So let's go through doing that really quickly. Uh, audio attenuation, uh, spatialization, sound attenuation. Uh, I'll just call it Glock and let's leave it as default. See what it sounds like. Uh, each of these have them all selected and find our Glock attenuation. This is just applying it straight to the sound wave itself. You wouldn't normally want to do this because you might want to use uh, these in several different places, but for us, it should be fine. So we should now see uh, when we hit play, we should see quite a lot of sounds and they're probably all going to be spawning all over the shop, which is what we want. There we go. Now we probably want to curate this a little bit because this is going to be triggering, well, all of the white notes at least. I think it sounds pretty phenomenal. But what I'm gonna do just to make it sound even better is just open this up to 2,500, 600, yeah, sure. 
just to tweak that a little bit. Now, oh, I, I could actually just tweak it here uh, because we have it. We've we've applied these to <laughs> to the version. So uh, 500, and let's go 2,000. This should throw them out quite a bit further away from each other. Um, and let's go 0.4. Uh, it should still be fine because they kind of end at different times. So I think it'll be right. But if I hit play again, um, you should start to see the end result here. Um, the tweaking, I can use any sources I'd like. There we go. And I think that is really beautiful. Because as we walk around, they're just going to be spawning everywhere. So now we're sort of into musical territory and each time one of these finishes, it's then going to trigger another one um, or it's going to be a free voice that's ready to go. I think it's really spectacular, like just hearing these spawning in this area. Uh, they get the spatialization for free. They get the panning for free. Uh, it's really, really exciting. And I think it sounds wonderful. Um, I'd love to add some more Sandstorm stuff here and take some of the other versions of Ambience components and things as well. But this is a version of how we might do it with C++. Um, we're just spawning these different samples, um, spawning random options. You could use sound cues, you could use meta sounds, you could do all sorts of cool things here, but it has to start here. So uh, thanks for watching. Um, follow me at Dweaver Audio. Check out uh, The Stray Gods, this fantastic new musical uh, musical game that's come out made, made in Unreal Engine uh, with Wise and Unreal. Uh, check out uh, Weaver Audio and um, I'll see you next time.